Local, quick, and to the point. You're watching WDEF News 12 at 7, live in HD, with John Mercer, Amy Catcher, and Chief Meteorologist Patrick Cole. At the end of another year, I have once again avoided seeing anything made by Adam Sandler and his Happy Madison production company. Grown Ups 2 is generally seen as the worst film of 2013, but since I didn't waste my time with it, I can't say so definitively. But there are still plenty of films I saw this year that I wish I hadn't. Here's my list of the worst films of 2013. The Hangover Part 3 is yet another film in a long line of pointless, artless franchise building. Very few comedy films have quality sequels. Familiar jokes aren't funny the second or third time around. However, The Hangover 3 doesn't have many jokes in the first place. For a comedy, the film is surprisingly dark. It's more of a road-slash-drug caper film. Nothing from the original premise remains. Instead, the film focuses on the two characters that are at, that are at best used sparingly, Alan and Chow. The result is an overabundance of annoyance, boredom, and bad language. There was no story to tell beyond the first film, and the fact that two more Hangover films were made is an example of everything that's wrong with Hollywood. We can only hope that the money grab is over, but I'm not holding my breath. The Counselor must have seemed like a home run. Ridley Scott is director, Cormac McCarthy is screenwriter, a cast featuring Javier Bardem, Brad Pitt, and Michael Fassbender. But somehow, despite all the talent, the filmmakers managed to produce a thriller without any thrills, of any kind. The film plods from scene to scene, with characters making long, philosophical speeches about the nature of sin and the consequences of evil. It's too long by about 20 minutes, and waiting for a resolution for each character is like standing in line at the grocery store, counting the 15 items in the cart in front of you when the sign clearly says 10. Just, you just want to get what you came for and go home. Despite multiple decapitations and a baffling use of cheetah metaphors, the counselor has nothing to hold the audience's interest, and as a result, the film is a waste of time. A movie about bank robber magicians doesn't sound great on paper. Coincidentally, a movie about bank robber magicians is also not great on screen. Now You See Me might serve as a welcome distraction on an international flight, when there is literally nothing else to look at, but in a theater it is absurd. Thinly plotted and fraught with cliché, if Joe Bluth made a movie, it would look a lot like Now You See Me. The magicians in the film demand to be taken seriously, and for some reason we're supposed to believe that the FBI does too. In every scene, you can almost hear the final countdown playing softly somewhere in the background. I've got nothing against magicians. I like misdirection and sleight of hand as much as the next guy. But the magic industry has a PR problem. Unfortunately, Now You See Me does nothing to make magic any cooler. If anything, it might make you roll your eyes just a little bit more. And those are the worst films of 2013.